Hello, and welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. This is a reading for Taurus. If Taurus is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your reading. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Taurus, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And look at that, an ace of discs. This is... Uh, showing some signs of, of prosperity coming in, right? Uh, we're planting the seeds of these kind of future rewards. This is a really good way to start. Let's put that into some context though with our dove and serpent spread. Very interesting here. Um, if there's anything you need me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know. And finishing up, Path of the Serpent here. Wow, really? Really terrific cards here. Um, I don't usually read reversals, but we have the Fool and the Five of Swords that just happen to be upside down in my deck. I try to keep everything right side up. I don't um, intentionally do any kind of reversal reading. But this might be significant, since it is kind of odd and out of place, right? Let's do our mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. We're going to use the Wait Smith for the mystery card. Um, this is the card that we're just going to set aside. We'll put the little frog on top. Thank you, frog. And they can hang out over there. And um, hopefully at the end of the reading, that card will tie everything together and, you know, give us the confirmation that we need. So look around here. We've got uh, major, major, major. We've got some fire, some water, some earth. We've got some more fire court card at the end here. And we've got this air energy. So we got a little bit of everything, I think, which is a good thing. Um, here is that ace of discs we're talking about. Ace of uh, pentacles. I think that you are um, either just about to begin or, or you just have kind of started um, something new in, in terms of maybe business, maybe like a project, a career thing. Um, if you're in retirement, this is just like your your commitment to some kind of new work that you do, right? A uh, new project, creative project, whatever it might be. Um, <clears throat> I feel like you are someone who doesn't like to start things unless you know that you're going to finish them. I think you're also someone that really gets tremendous uh, inspiration from the world around you. And you use that as kind of um, as guidelines almost, right, to kind of know where to take a project or know what to do with things. I think you're very creative. I think you're someone who really is um, very hardworking. You've got that, that Taurus energy uh, and, and stamina kind of thing. But you really know how to take in the beauty and the joy of your surroundings. It's like you're, you're kind of nourished by the world right? And I think that's quite fitting because Venus rules Taurus and Venus is all about appreciating the love and the beauty and the joy and the pleasure and the, the aesthetics of the world around us, you know, receiving impressions that inspire us, that make us feel uh, happy and joyous. I was going to say make us feel good, but good is kind of a, it's kind of a basic word, right? So I want elation, I want joy, I want ecstasy, I want, um, I want this sense of holiness, uh, you know, to be um, elicited from my soul when I'm out existing in the world, you know, uh, out in nature, it's in your meetings with other people, your interactions, it's in your, um, just your relationship with your pets or your plants or your people, uh, with the world at large, right? So whatever you're working on now is the result of you receiving all of this love energy, all of these inspiring impressions from the world, and then putting that into your work, your art, your business, your organization, your charity, whatever you do, right? Whatever your work is. And for everyone who is 
in their retirement uh, phase of life. When I say work, I don't mean your job, your career, your employment. I mean the work that you do, what you commit yourself to every day, um, you know, or maybe four days a week, I don't know. But it's the, it's the effort that you put into something on a continual basis, uh, working towards something, working on something, right? Could be in your workshop at home, um, building things. Maybe you're a woodworker, uh, a glass worker, stone worker, a blacksmith. Uh, maybe you paint, maybe you draw, maybe you, I don't know, build models. I don't know what it is. It's anything, right? And everything. But the point is with this Ace of Discs is that you are beginning something new. And um, I think you're coming off a previous cycle of activity. We see this Ten of Wands, and we might as well go to the Ten of Wands in the background here. The Ten of Wands is um, really the, the end of the creative line. I think this is talking about you recently closing out a cycle of intense activity. And I think this activity does come in cycles. I think it does uh, come in waves, you know. Maybe you don't know exactly when they are going to come. That could be why the fool energy is up here on its head. Um, you don't really know when these cycles or these phases or these intense visitations of energy, uh, Jim Morrison reference, um, you don't know when they're going to come. But when they do come, you heed the call. That's why there's the Prince of Wands here at the end. Um, and you begin your work and you, and you do it and you commit to it and you go 100% into it. And I think this Ten of Wands is talking about the last one, the one that you maybe have, have just recently come off of. It feels like it was a really intense project or activity or focus, or commitment, whatever, whatever it was. Um, it had a lot of creativity, had a lot of fire energy, a lot of activity, very busy. Uh, you may have just um, recently been enjoying a period of rest in between phases, right? In between these waves of energy. And that could be a three of cups down here beneath everything, showing that um, we are fire and then we can also be water. We can enjoy the fruits of our labors. We can celebrate it with friends and family. This is also your inspiration from the world around you. You know, This is your sense of joy and love, a real abundance of water within you. Um, because you're always seeking love and joy and abundance and connection and meaning and synchronicity and holiness outside with others, with your pets, plants, people, um, and, and so this fills your cup. This keeps your fountain really flowing. This is a uh, three of cups that never runs out, right? The more you use it, the more full it becomes, right? It's kind of a, a Tao Te Ching reference there. Um, it's inexhaustible because it keeps being replenished. The more we use it, the more it fills up, you know. And I think this is the foundation of all of your all of your work. It's that joy. It's that beauty. It's really, it's very Taurian, Taurus, Taurusian, if you ask me, right? This appreciation of beauty around us. It's that Venus kind of rulership that we have uh, with the Taurus sign. And I think it really, um, really inspires you, you know, and I think that's, that's really wonderful. So this current cycle that you're, that you're entering into, I don't know if it's here yet or if it's coming in the next few days, it's going to be a lot of work. Here's the three of discs. Um, I was wondering if you're a craftsperson of some kind. If you if you build um, you build products maybe to sell. Maybe you have a, a cottage business. Maybe you do something on Etsy. Um, maybe you just like to build things in your workshop for friends and family. You know something like that. But I feel like you're skilled. You're very skilled at something. You know. Um, something with some fine details. I'm getting like um, either some intricate woodworking or like bronze work or something that involves um, the, uh, the removing of material in order to reveal something extraordinary and beautiful underneath. Something like that. Uh, and I feel like you're, you're going to really commit to this and this is your next, your next job, your next project. Um, 
it's um, it's a it's a commitment, right? It's going to take a lot of your time and effort and focus. And with the three of discs, it really is about the uh, the proper energy put into the different areas of this. You know, so there's the the physical work, there's the planning stages, there's the business side of it. When then you go to to sell it or to market it or distribute it or whatever you do with it, right? Kind of the before, the during, and the after, you know. And so we have those three kind of components of the work. And then I think there's also these three phases of the work where there is the initial rush and spark and you're, you're enthusiastic and you're going, going, going. And then the middle phase where you're kind of tired of it, you almost feel like giving up and you just think, I, don't, I just don't like this. I don't like the way it's turning out. I don't wanna do it anymore. I just wanna go sit on the couch. And then that third phase, which is that renewed it renewed vigor, but in a calm way, almost like it's now become your divine mission in life, right? To finish this project. It almost has become your, your holy task. And I think you might operate in those kinds of phases. We have, a, you know, the three and the three of cups down there. It's kind of a significant number for you. It could be that these kinds of projects, these waves of energy happen in, in sets of three. Um, it could be that it's generally about three months or maybe three weeks or th could be three days even uh, in between these projects. Uh, it could be that you have to make three of them right now, whatever they may be. Okay, So I think three is very significant for you. But I feel like the work that you do is meant to reveal, like I said, you're kind of chiseling away or, or removing material <clears throat> like a, a sculpture or... Uh, some woodworking or something where you're trying to, through your skill, the skill of your, your hand, your tools, reveal the beauty that is underneath, right? You're chiseling away at something to reveal that beauty underneath it. And I, I, I get the sense that you, you are an artist in that way, you know, and it may be that you don't even consider yourself an artist, that this is just a practical skill that you have. And, but there's a real art to it, okay? Now, this full energy came out of the deck on its head, upside down. I generally don't read reversals. Um, there's some component of this that is um, a little bit confusing right now. There's almost this um, this sense of, um, I don't know if things have become too routine with this. I mean, if we have these number threes, we kind of are, we're able to predict it a little bit. Well, I know it's gonna be three weeks or whatever until the next one, or I know it's, it just seems like it's a little bit too rhythmic. You know, it's almost too predictable. There's not enough surprise left in it. Um, the fool on its head leads me to believe that um, there's another force involved. Here might be a person, you know. I think that there is some confusion with this other, this other person. Maybe it's whoever has commissioned you, or whoever's involved in this work, or maybe the customer or the organization that you uh, associate with. The other, okay. Whoever the other is. Um, I feel like they've been kind of acting strangely. They've been acting out of character. And I, I don't know if that's because, um, because they're, they're asking you for this product or project or they're, um, they're trying to influence how you do things. Because I, I get this feeling that they're kind, of, they're kind of butting into your business a little bit, right? They're being a little bit uh, inconsiderate, which seems a little out of character for them. And I don't know what this has to do with your work. Like, I think maybe they're either the people who pay you or, um, you know, like the customer or maybe your employer or, I don't know, the friend or the family member for whom you're doing this creative work, this project. But I feel like they're kind of, they're trying to... Um, well, maybe not trying, but they, they are kind of disrupting your flow, okay? 
because it generally is this routine. It is fairly predictable for you, but there's this, there's this fool that comes dancing in and upsets this kind of rhythm that we have that um, throws the balance off a little bit, you know, a little bit of, of disruption. And I, I feel like there's some, there's this feeling of, of um, inconsideration, right? You don't really appreciate this energy, you know? We said at the very start that it, it kind of seems like it's becoming too rhythmic, but I know you kind of, you're comfortable with that. So this fool energy coming in to upset that rhythm is unwanted. It's not appreciated. But at the same time, maybe it's necessary. Maybe we need to kind of turn things upside down a little bit. Maybe we need to be surprised. You know, it's an odd feeling that I get because it's, it's a very kind of predictable rhythm, right? Every three weeks or whatever it is. Um, it's just kind of a routine now. And we can sometimes get very comfortable in routines. So the fool energy might be, uh, you know, in, in Castaneda's world, it might be Don Juan with his histrionics, um, just really doing the unexpected, right? It's just um, in, a, in a professional conversation, suddenly someone starts uh, just dancing and, and whatever and, and doing flips off the table and really, really acting out of character, right? Something to disrupt. It's that kind of cognitive dissonance where we don't know if what we're seeing is real. It's just kind of, it's bringing us to a new conscious awareness, right? It's making us feel very self-conscious because this isn't just like an autopilot kind of thing. Now we're really aware, you know, um, seeing something out of the ordinary experience, uh, something that is completely unexpected brings us to a little bit of that self-consciousness and i think this fool energy is is pretty much don juan doing these things to um kind of awaken you to this habit of routine that we're in right so this is the um kind of like an elephant in the room this is the this is the clown kind of dancing around i hope no one has a fear of clowns this is the court jester that, that comes in to a very serious discussion in the king's court. And everybody's just like, what's, what's going on, you know? It's a, a shock to the system. And I don't know that they're doing this intentionally, but it's just through, through them acting out of character, it brings you to kind of a, a, a more acute awareness of this present moment, okay? Um, we probably should have talked about the Six of Cups before that fool. The Six of Cups is like what I was saying about you're, you receive the, the joy and the beauty and the love impressions. You, you're swelling with this wonderful uh, divine water, this holy water, and you're then expressing it back outwardly. The three plus the three, we get the Six of Cups. And this is the real, um, this is the real synchronicity, the real harmony and resonance the kind of uh, symbiosis with the universe, the give and take, the, the mutually beneficial, um, you know, flow of this love, water, beauty, energy. Okay, so this is kind of the result of the work that you do, um, which leads me to think that maybe this isn't like a career or a job or something, you know, because the results of your work is more love and joy and beauty and happiness, not necessarily coins right? We don't really see a lot of earth energy around us just with what we're doing is related to the material world. But the, the work on the material plane is kind of just the, the symbol of all of this other energy that's going on. You know, it's this, it's just the outward expression of all of this, well, the water energy mostly. But as we get to the path of the serpent, I think you're being you're being asked to, um, to open yourself to this acute awareness. This fool energy that comes in is really like, um, you know, I'm trying to think of a, of a reference for this one. I'm sure there, there are millions of references. Um, 
where the the foolish person, let's say, I don't want to say like the the bumbling fool or the idiot or something, uh, the fool energy comes into a problem, and everybody thinks, "Oh, get out of here! You're not you're you're not helping," you know. But the fool, in their innocence, in their foolishness, in their dancing around and being silly, accidentally bumps into something, bumps into a lever, hits a button, and that fixes everything, right? What movie is that? That's probably a thousand movies. Leave a comment. Let me know um, where that uh, that metaphor is, is um, in your kind of your favorite movie or something. Um, but I, I feel like that's kind of the uh, the message of the priestess here. This is some real full moon energy, and <clears throat> I think that um, we need to be open to this awareness. It is. An important thing anytime our consciousness notices something right like really notices something and we feel an awareness of ourselves and that object or person or event that is something that we should take seriously and that's something significant right I mean right now yes I'm conscious of the lights and the cameras and the the cards in front of me and all that stuff but when I see something that really stands out like when that fool was upside down, something out of the ordinary, something that typically, generally, in my expectation, shouldn't be there, right? Because I try to keep all my cards upright. I don't do reversals. Uh, I don't need to do reversals. I don't think anyone really does because each card has light and shadow to it, right? And unless we're doing a very simple, like one card um, reading or something, the cards are related to every other card. So the Fool can be positive or negative, is usually a little bit of both, depending on where it is in the spread and what cards are around it and next to it. You know, who's it interacting with? What is the situation into which this Fool is kind of coming, diving headfirst into your situation? Well, it's almost like this priestess card has their arms open to catch this fool as it falls, right? So the universe really could be preparing you for a very significant moment. It's just, um, again, I'm thinking of like a cartoon or something where uh, someone's just in their workshop working, 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 and then in flies this person or, you know, someone in distress or someone that just had their own adventure and was like shot out of a cannon or something and just crashes through the building and lands right in the, the blacksmith's arms or something, you know. It's a chance encounter. It's, um, it just happens that the, the two of you on your own adventures have come together in this moment in a, in a rather startling way, a rather uh, unique kind of way. So I don't know what is the uniqueness about this situation, but I feel like we need to embrace this fool energy. If this is a person, if this is a situation, if this is some kind of unexpected variable, if this is something from the organization or the company or whatever, right? Whatever is out of the ordinary in this current cycle of creativity is what you need to really focus on and embrace, welcome it, okay? Because I think it is a sign. I think it is a message for you, it's something that you you need to be ready. It's like you know, and it's uh, it's almost um, kind of like uh, Neo in in the first Matrix movie, where he gets the call and he says, "Okay, in in ten seconds, walk out of your office and turn left," or something like that. So it's almost like the universe is saying, "Look, um, in three seconds, uh, open up your arms, get ready to catch something," and then in comes this fool, and it's whatever you know. Um, I'm sure I don't have the Matrix movie exactly right. It's been years since I've seen it. But I feel like this is all part of your destiny. Here is the Wheel of Fortune. This is the part of the larger wheel. I think you're aware of these smaller wheels, the kind of weekly or, you know, the daily, weekly, monthly, yearly cycles of your life. The energy comes, you work, you create, the energy goes. Um, your love and beauty and sense of aesthetics and joy and elation and connection flows outwardly, it flows back inwardly, it's very rhythmic. It's like the moon energy, it's like the ebb and flow, the waxing and waning. Uh, the, the more short cycles, but this, this is a larger wheel. 
This is the grand cycle, right? This is the lifetime cycle. So whatever is happening now with this fool energy is a very important step on your larger cycle, okay? And that's, I think, the reason why we have to be aware that this current, this cycle, it's like these are these little gears, right? In the, in the watch, they all have to turn kind of fast. And this is the big, the big gear in the watch that is going, you know, slowly or, or however exactly it works. There's larger gears and smaller gears, I think. Anyway, um, the Five of Swords also came out upside down, or, I mean, it should usually be this way. I like to say this is right side up, okay, with the, the point of spirit at the very top. Your, your highest sense of divinity, your highest ideal of holiness is in charge of things, right? Um, you, are, uh, you are understanding. You are um, achieving clarity. There's down here, there's the tumult, there's the chaos, there's the confusion. We started with this fool energy as some kind of confusion, right? And as we worked our way through the cards, we're starting to understand a little bit the purpose of that. And this is you understanding that. This is you working that out within your mind and um, trusting in it. Even though there's still this chaos down beneath, the this uh, kind of... Um, amalgam of, of elements. We can't separate them necessarily. We have to just kind of rise above the chaos and just say, yeah, look, I don't understand. And that's okay. This is still kind of confusing to me, but that's okay. I'm going to trust in my highest ideal of divinity. And I'm going to embrace this situation because I accept that it's part of my larger cycle. And so this is a very, this is a unique one. You know, we said that this was kind of very routine, very um, predictable, but this, this time around, there's going to be the unexpected. Okay. So I think this is kind of, this is a message that you need to hear like urgently, because I feel like it's this, this current go round that is going to be very significant. Okay. I think we need to watch out for the signs here um, from spirit within the form of this fool energy all right so you can get yourself a copy or, or look it up on the internet and look at this fool card and you know kind of keep that in your back pocket to to be aware of when this energy comes in now it may not be a green man with a tiger on its leg um but you'll recognize that energy when it comes in okay it might already be on its way it might already be there um the next card is this Prince of Wands. Now, this is you continuing your cycle of creative work and then rest and then creative work and then rest. But this time around, you're doing it with the acceptance and the knowledge and the attempt to understand via this Five of Swords um, that this time around is a little different, right? So this is the fire energy, but informed with the air, right? It's the Prince of Wands, the air of fire. So it's kind of a, a more informed, a more conscious. It's like, continue doing your work as normal. Everything is normal, but be ready for the unexpected, right? This is the kind of, um, this is the, the knowledge that something is coming. The awareness that you have to um, be on the lookout, right? And I think this is really an important, uh, important um, influx of this fool air energy into the work that you do. And maybe this is kind of the balance that we need, that spontaneity that we need, you know, just to shake up our routines, bring us to a heightened awareness. Um, the way that you're continuing this work, again, it's business as usual, but there's a heightened awareness already, right? And that could be the simple uh, purpose of all of this, but I do feel like this fool energy is Maybe bringing you some uh, greater opportunity, a chance to really expand your work or grow your business or something like that. Take things to the next level. We're going to take things to the mystery card and see um, what this might reveal. Thank you, Frog. I appreciate you. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know what this might be. It could be some more uh, earth energy. But... Um, Things are pretty balanced the way they are. 
So let's just jump into it and see what we've got. A Queen of Swords. This is the understanding that will eventually come. This card saying, look, trust in this energy now. In time, you will understand, right? You will understand the spiritual significance of this current configuration of energy. The current alignment of cards and, and energies here uh, will reveal itself to you and you will come to understand the purpose of it all, right? This is the water of the air. This is that heightened awareness, the attempt at understanding, the attempt at, at figuring it out mentally. But now it's got that water component inside. And the water is what was important to us to begin with, right? So it's going to be an understanding and it's going to be uh, related to this sense of aesthetics, the sense of joy and, and connection that we, we started with, right? So this is a very, very important time in your life. I'm very excited for you. Uh, we're going to do an extended, too. If you want to stick around, just click on the link right there. You can have access to all of the extended readings. I want to thank you for being here. Please hit the like button. Please leave a comment. Consider subscribing to the channel if this resonated with you. Um, thank you again for being here, and thank you for being the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot.